Hey everybody, it's The Last Raider. We're back with another video, and uh, if you have not seen this on Twitter, uh, it will be up there. <laughs> uh, I plan on putting this video, uh, the link on Twitter, on this little thread that happened here. Uh, we had someone, uh, a dumb, dumb SJW, I'm not going to tell everyone who he is. Or where it works because we're not we're not about harassment. We're just going to be talking today about the type of people that will be hired at Marvel. And this is how the comic starts. We're going to jump right in here. I am the hero Gotham deserves. Listen, you're not a hero. You're a cop. And uh, let let me explain something. The term hero is not dependent on your job. All right. We already have this, oh, he's trying to appeal to the BLM crowd with the first panel right out of the gate. We have a massive virtue signal going up. And you're going to see communist politics in this just take front and center of someone who knows nothing about Batman. Now, in this, as you can see here as he's going along, he's talking about, uh, oh, you're a billionaire, you should put this in. Uh, Batman's like, um, like he's a moron. You want to be a hero? You're a billionaire. How about you invest your excessive wealth into the community? And here's the stupid part, because if you know anything about Batman, about every scene with Bruce Wayne himself is Bruce Wayne giving absorbent amount of money to charities to funds there is actually an event in dc where they have what's called the bang baby uh bang baby event where or i think it's like the big bang or something it's been a while but it was during the it was actually hit on pretty good in the static shock cartoon and uh, in there that's where static and a bunch of other a whole bunch of kids and, uh, and other people end up getting exposed to a mutagenic chemical which turns them into metahumans basically and as it turns out one of them is a girl that you know static pleads with batman over not knowing who batman is and then because she's got superpowers that if i recall correctly she becomes like metal and she can create uh metal fingernails that she can or claws she can actually shoot and she ends up almost getting duped by Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. They almost use her without giving her anything, and then they like throw her out like she's a piece of trash. Bruce Wayne is the one that comes in there and actually opens a clinic, that a free clinic, for people suffering from bang baby superpowers, from the exposure to this mutagen. He actually helps people you know, get over it. There's another one in the Batman the Animated Series where Batman and Superman have a crossover event, and Lex Luthor wants to take Bruce Wayne Tech's uh, space robotics uh, technology and apply it to the military. And Bruce Wayne pretty much tells him, yeah, fuck off, dude. I'm not doing this. But, I mean, this this concept of, you know, Batman puts all of his money. Batman is, in the, in the, in the comic books, Batman is so fucking rich, it's retarded. It's, it's almost comical how much money this man has. And he spends it taking care of people. But you're going to see in this as we keep going, because I'm going to have, it's going to be a long video. I'm just warning you, it's going to be a long video. You're going to see this is the type of person that gets hired at DC and Marvel. Promise you, this guy will eventually be working at DC because they're going to be like, oh, you know, this guy, this guy has, because they're hiring him on politics. They're not hiring him on anything else. He's not a fan. Anyway, I give back. I run an orphanage. Yeah, for tax reasons. Um, Still a good thing. <laughs> okay. Still a good thing. Batman's running an orphanage. I mean, Bruce Wayne's got the money to keep the orphanage going. And I bet you them orphans eat well. Okay. It, it's not like other orphanages. I promise you that if... I, I've never seen the orphanage that he's run. But I promise you, Bruce Wayne, anything that Bruce Wayne runs has the best level of technology, has the best level of care, he hires the best people because he can pay for those people. Okay? Even if he gets a tax write-off on it, that tax write-off probably goes back into the orphanage. This is stupid. 
and and here we go because this is another thing about leftism because you get the leftism like a fucking essay okay it's a comic book you moron it's called show not tell okay <laughs> we we're, we're sitting here we have this entire dialogue for perspective with your wealth you could literally afford to give 1500 to everyone in Gotham who doesn't make a living wage. In fact, this may actually reduce crime more than you running around every night as the world's most expensive cop, since less people would need to resort to crime to survive. One, Batman is not a cop. Okay, he's just, he's more of a civilian detective who is doing who is taking up cases out of his own free will. He's a, te he's a detective that d goes pro bono, pretty much. He's the ultimate detective. He's got all the gadgets, all the gear. He, he has the resources to solve your case, and he doesn't have to be paid. He does this because he's had major trauma in his life. Bruce Wayne watched his mom and dad get brutally murdered by a petty thug. He does not want this to happen to anyone else. So he devotes his time and resources to fixing things. You, there are instances, like, I was robbed at one point in my life. I lost my TV, my PlayStation, all of my games. My wife's camera was taken. These idiots just ran off with everything. And the police go, yeah, unless you've got damning evidence pointing their direction, there's nothing we can do. Fortunately, they managed to get one of the guys in there, and he was a drug addict. And he was in the middle of getting his fix. And so he freaked out, got paranoid and caved and admitted to stealing all the stuff. So I ended up getting everything back, thankfully by the grace of God. But you imagine if you had someone like Batman who will take up the cases, who will do what no police officer is willing to do and will actually stand up to police officers when they do something wrong. Let's be frank. If Batman were real, George Floyd would not be dead right now. Batman would have whooped the shit out of all five, four of those cops, beat them within an inch of their life, and actually, George Floyd would have gotten a free ride in the Batmobile to the nearest hospital. Okay? That's what Batman does. He, d he can take out an entire army of thugs. He can take an entire game. It, like, the Bloods and the Crips, Crips could get into a fight. Batman would wipe all of them out without killing a single one of them. That's what Batman's supposed to do. And also, here's the thing. If a $1,500 was going to fix, uh, would, would give people a living wage, why didn't the 1200 that Trump gave out there stop these protests and the looting? People got, everyone in America got $1,200 from the government, and they still went out and stole a bunch of TVs. <laughs> what was it? We just didn't give them 300 extra dollars? Is, is that what had happened? Did, did we screw up there? So he's trying to make the assumption, like I said, he's trying to make the assumption already that Bruce Wayne is a cop. And Bruce Wayne is not a cop. He's no more a cop than Superman is. Superman is just a guy who is bulletproof, who has super strength, who can run fat, who can run up and catch a bullet before it hits you. And he's decided, I'm going to take my powers, my skills, and I'm going to use them to help people. All right, if someone tries to kill another human being, Superman just runs over. If they try to shoot him, Superman runs up, catches the bullet, then runs over and crushes the other dude's gun within a fraction of a second. It's like, it's over. And he saves another person. He does this because he has the power to do so. Bruce Wayne has the power to help people. But here's the thing. And the one of the reasons, I know a lot of people don't understand this, but this is the thing about the bad guys that Batman fights. Most of them are crazy. Batman the Animated Series, if you ever watched it, and a lot of Batman comic books you watch, they delve into the mental screw-ups that a lot of Batman's enemies are. Take Two-Face, for instance. There was actually an episode in the Animated Series where Two-Face developed a third personality that did not realize that he was a part, that he was a personality of Two-Face and Harvey Dent, living occupying the same body, and tried to have Harvey Dent killed. Okay? That's some mental fuckery right there, okay? Not to mention the Joker. We could do an entire video on how the Joker operates. I mean, you take, 
you take any of the others, like you take Scarface, for instance, who is basically some dude, <laughs> some wimpy dude making a puppet talk to the point where the puppet almost tries to kill him at one point in this series. It's, it's really fucked up, some of the people that he fights. And that's one of the reasons why Batman doesn't kill him also, is because they're, they're mental screw-ups. Okay, Batman's not going to kill anyone. He's going to fix society, even if he has to punch everybody to do it. Here we go again. If I spent that much, I could not afford to be Batman. No. Actually, Batman spends that much money, and he still can afford to be Batman. How much does does it actually cost to be Batman? <laughs> Dude... It, it probably costs a lot. I mean, it, actually, no, it probably doesn't cost a whole lot of money. You're talking uh, one tactical suit that's highly advanced. It's got some Kevlar lining, uh, probably a jet. You're looking at the round, probably the ballpark of about, I'm going to say maybe 200 to $250 million to maintain. That that is That is maintenance costs for everything that Batman uses. Okay, that's not development. Batman's developed stuff over the years. He's got all these gadgets and equipment and stuff that he's developed. Once he's developed them, you've also got to think about what does he do with the technology afterward. Okay, like you know, jets and things of that nature, or even his even the Batmobile. Some of its equipment is probably sprinkled into some of Wayne Tech's. Wayne Wayne, Wayne Tech does everything. They build cars. They build spaceships. They do scientific crap out the nose. All right. It, it is retarded. The, the amount of stuff that Wayne Tech is involved in, you realize he has a shit, metric shit ton of money. Okay? he's He actually almost rivals Scrooge McDuck in just stupid rich. All right? And this idiot doesn't know. This idiot who drew, who drew this and wrote this out has no freaking clue about what Batman is. Here we go with this one. You hire, you've hired a team of engineers, architects, researchers, logistics workers, laborers, hollowed out a cave, which he has the ability to do, have several military-grade vehicles. Honestly, let, let, let me tell you something right now. People sit back and talk about military-grade vehicles as if they're super expensive surveillance tech. All right, let's just read this here real quick. Have several military-grade vehicles, surveillance tech, analytics, infrastructure, and cutting-edge wearable technology the likes of which society cannot even fathom yes and here's the thing even with the technology that you've got okay if you take military grade hardware let's say batman wants to drive around in a tank your average any civilian can buy a russian tank like a full-blown russian main battle tank for less than 500 bucks if you're talking super expensive, that that that's usually the super expensive stuff is like the top secret shit. All right, you're you're getting really secretive. Batman doesn't need a tank. Batman needs a highly advanced vehicle. All right, probably a one of a time one of a kind vehicular unit. He probably builds them in mass. He can afford to do all this crap, and he just gets creative with all of it. Most businessmen have figured out ways around all this stuff. It's like. A lot of, and even the technology that's being put forward, okay? Batman could apply some things to military, even though he doesn't. You take um, highly advanced Kevlar and stuff like that. He could get the ability to do this, build a bunch of Kevlar suits on mass for the military, get paid by the military to do it. Like he would make, he would literally not be spending any money. He would literally be making money off of life saving bulletproof armament for the military and then just keep a few suits for himself if he wanted to or keep something like it and then have it redesigned for personal use. Uh, the, the whole thing with Wayne Tech, he walks in there and ba- like with uh, the Christian Bale movies or the. Uh, forgot the director who did that. I'd say Christian Bale. Uh, we'll just say Christian Bale's Batman. All right. Uh, Christopher Nolan, the Christopher Nolan movies. In there, Bruce is not having technology developed all the time. About the second movie, he develops technology. The first movie, he just kind of commandeers military grade tech. That's all he's doing. The Batmobile is a military grade vehicle used for uh, creating a cable bridge. The Bat suits next generation military armor. Uh, the bat cape that, you know, becomes rigid with an electrical charge 
is uh, just some sort of shape memory material that they <laughs> that they develop. Um, and, and he, you know, Bruce Wayne just kind of takes it, the grapple gun, every, and almost all of the technology that Bruce starts with. And then he's got R and D departments that can that can work on this stuff. And then he probably field tests it himself and then gives him field testing results. He's actually kind of cutting corners if you stop and think about it. Custom cybernetic bat helmet. Um, someone has played the game but not read the comics. Probably pulled this. This is the uh, bat wing from... Cost a custom... Me- custom made bat plane oh no 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 bat plane it is a bat wing and secondly 837 million is not the cost I mean, even the cybernetic helmet if you're talking just in night vision systems alone an average set of night vision goggles even the high tech ones are going to run you about three grand you're talking about most of the technology is just communications and armament would be most of the bat helmet uh, if you're talking about a heads-up display, which tells you some other things, you're talking about a Google Glass. It's not even near 106 million. This person has no clue. He's just making up numbers. <laughs> Cost of developing and testing and manufacturing the bat rang. No, it's not this much money. Even in the Christopher Nolan movie, if you're going by Christopher Nolan's movies, the bat rings are not high-tech pieces of are not high-tech pieces of equipment. That's something stupid. The um, what is it? The stupid Batwoman show came out with oh the bat rings is high tech piece no batman's a, basically a ninja all right the bat ring is his shuriken it it's damn simple to figure out but no we're we are so freaking stupid right now we can't get this and even the bat plane it is the one piece of equipment i would say would cost you about a billion dollars so i mean and then you also got this models updated every five years why do they have to be updated? The U.S. military ran a uh, Tomcat. I think it was the F- F-15 Tomcat for almost a decade. Before it was pressed out of service. The M1 Abrams has been running for more than almost two decades. Uh, lots. Of, the, this is basic military equipment. When you build something, it's got to be cheap and effective. Batman just basically miniaturizes a bunch of currently existing technology and then, you know, kind of sells parts of it on the on the market public market all that so every night you can punch like two people in the face while you wait for the real cops to show up why did you punch me bro police will be here shortly actually no batman would probably either tie them up and there would be evidence there he makes the job basically batman like i said he's a detective who makes the job of the police so dadgum easy that they have no choice to help out They have no choice but to pick it up. You've already got all the evidence. Now, I would love to see a comic book in which they explored a legal defense of, well, you know, Batman's not a cop, and we don't know this evidence come from Batman. Uh, Batman's not a registered cop. We would have to have Batman here, and, you know, you have to think about it. Another thing that, well, we'll get to that point here in a minute. We need to get through here. Well, I got one that's coming up that uh, you know kind of kind of makes this kind of difficult here. It kind of blows this entire thing out of the water. And when that's all said and done, you still have an extravagant amount of leftover will for your multi-million, your multinational corporation. Okay, here's the thing about multinational corporations, dude. They make money. Okay, it, it's not something that sits there. It, every SJW has this idea that capitalism doesn't work, and that. You've literally said you've got leftover money from your multinational corporation. Yes. I may have misread that, actually. But anyway, yeah. it makes You're telling him that his multinational corporation makes a shit ton of money. Why can't he do this? All right? You're, making, you're trying to make the argument that he's just an expensive cop. No. Like I said, he's more of a detective who has the resources to to find this, to find people, to do all this stuff. Most of the time, Batman's intervening because those people just kind of cross his path while he's in the process of being a detective. Woman's fixing to be raped out there. He jumps down. And it's like, why'd you punch me, bro? It's like, dude, Batman's not running around there just punching random people. 
All right. There was actually one comic I remember where it's like a night where Batman's running and these two people are like fighting it out. It's got to the point where the woman's about to stab her husband and he's, he's about to break a bottle and, and gut her. Next thing you know, the window busts open, a gas canister comes in there and like knocks them both the F out. <laughs> Batman's like, nope, you're not killing each other today. Uh, he goes out there and he, you know, he's like taking out people right and left. It, people who are doing bad things and some people who are just having a bad day. He's making them just you know, stop and take a moment. Think. And here we go. I make people happy though. I'm a symbol of hope. Uh, no. Batman is a symbol of justice, number one. And Batman also wears the cape and cowl because here's the thing. If Bruce Wayne goes out there, all right, and starts helping and starts doing this, you know, uh, you know, affecting crime directly, he goes out there and spends most of his wealth helping people. Okay, helping the downtrodden. If Bruce Wayne goes in there and starts using his money to do what you're doing, there will eventually be a gang member, like Falcone, for instance, who will come along and try to control it. That's one of the things about Christopher Nolan's Batman. When he goes in there and he deals with the mafia boss, he tells him, I'm not afraid of you. You need to go watch that dude because there's that one moment where I think it's Falcone is, is who the guy's playing as. He basically tells him, I could kill you right now. I've got all these guys on my payroll. There's nothing you could do about it. If I want to, I could go out there and find Alfred and shoot him in the head. And he, tell, he tells Bruce Wayne this, and Bruce Wayne realizes there's nothing he can really do to this guy as Bruce Wayne because this dude will come after your family. I mean, you would think SJWs would know this after this is one of their basic tactics of going after your family, your job, your business, your money, your livelihood. You would think most SJWs would know this. This is one of the reasons why Batman wears a freaking mask. It's another reason why Superman has a secret identity. It's another reason why Spider-Man wears a mask. It's one of the main reasons that a lot of superheroes wear masks. Okay? It's not because they want to be a symbol. That's a secondary objective. The primary objective of superheroes wearing masks is that no one can identify them and thus use their families against them. That's what makes being a superhero so interesting, is that these people can do their job without having to really worry about their families being put in harm's way. They can go full throttle for justice and not have to worry about being pulled off. You can buy a cop. You can threaten a cop's family and bring him to submission. Okay? You can't threaten Batman's family because no one knows who Batman is. It's not about being a symbol of hope. That's a secondary thing. But he's using this whole symbol of hope thing, this whole symbol nonsense, to you know segue and straw man into the next argument in the panel. Okay, so here's a way to actually make people happy. Why don't you take the billions of dollars you would have otherwise hoarded or spent on on your extravagant lifestyle, number number one, we, we've already explained that Batman spends most of his money on philanthropic things. I mean, almost every other time you see Bruce Wayne, he is out donating everybody. When he walks in there and out donates them as if he's being an asshole. Hey, it, there's actually a running joke in the comic where all the other billionaires just kind of look at him like, you dick, <laughs> comes in there and just makes them all look bad. <laughs> so stupid. And by a major pharmaceutical companies, then sell the dr then sell drugs at cost, forever changing the economic landscape of healthcare. Okay, here's the problem with this. You would not be able to make money at this. In or like you just stated a minute ago that the corporation has to make money. Here's the socialism coming out of this idiot. We are going to make something for free instead of make instead of you know making it and have people buy it. Most of your drugs, I mean how expensive are most of your over the counter pharmaceuticals? They're not that expensive. Okay? And ninety percent of the time there's a lot of health care. You also have to ask yourself how much like I said before, uh with uh, the Bang Baby event with Static Shock, for instance. Uh, I believe I may have said this. This video is getting long. I'm forgetting whether I've made points or not. But anyway, with that, like I said, there was a... Yeah, I remember. I did say it. There is a point in there where, you know, Bruce Wayne provides free clinics. Like, you pay nothing to go in there and get this mutation that's ravaged your body possibly fixed or at least teach you how to fix it. 
that was one of the things with uh, the metal claw chick was she eventually began to learn it was they went in there and did experimental stuff to teach her to control her powers a bit to the point where she could nullify them almost completely like they were almost non-existent they would be completely under her control bruce wayne did this you can't get a company nowadays i mean he literally is a one man saint jude's hospital that doesn't require donations from the public like there, Bruce Wayne, when he puts up a, a Wayne hospital for cancer kids, nobody, they don't go looking for money. Bruce Wayne just pay, fits the bill and he's like, yeah, screw it. Let's go cure cancer, guys. Uh, do that. We get done. We'll sell the technology to other people while we're at it. We'll make a quick buck at the same time. But we're going to help these cancer kids and then the adults will get them to buy some of it to, you know, to help bring the money into the company. He makes a little bit of money in it. This guy here thinks this is just going to solve it. Wow, I'm no longer thousands of dollars in debt because of my genetics. Thanks, Batman. Um, that's a little... I, I almost want to say that's racist. It's technically not. But it, then again, it is technically racist to an extent. Because different different people of different skin colors do have different genetics. That's just... Yeah, death to the corporation. Death to corporate health care. I'm Batman. I use my wealth for good now. What? Dude, we're already using it for good. You don't know. You don't know. This is the person they're going to hire at DC, I promise you. They will hire someone like this or someone just this clueless. They're, they're just faking being a geek. I, how much is Alfred making? Now we're getting stupid. Okay? He's not a slave. Whoa, dude, I never said he was. Like, this is this is him trying to... He's trying to make Batman say stuff. Like, oh, I didn't. I never said that. I never said you were a racist. Uh, but you must think you're a racist now because of this. Oh, boy. Here we go. Alfred has a comfortable life. I live in Master Bruce's manner because I cannot afford the prohibitive cost of living in Gotham. So you're saying Alfred... Lives in a mansion and does butlery things because he can't afford an apartment in Gotham. Probably a three bedroom apartment. He lives in a fucking mansion. And you also don't understand the dynamic between Alfred and Batman. Alfred is basically Batman's father figure. He's the man that he he was very close to Thomas Wayne, very close to Martha Wayne. Um, there's a show called Pennyworth that's supposed to be coming out that's going to explore Alfred as a butler. And another thing also, Alfred was a freaking badass. Okay? I hate how they portray Alfred now because in a lot, some of the comic books, but mostly in the Batman the Animated Series... There was actually one point where Alfred, this chick called Red Claw, was trying to get information out of Alfred to launch, I think it was a nuclear missile, gain access to nuclear missile codes. And Alfred was such a badass that he actually turned his launch code into an incoherent song about unicorns and dragons and other bullshit so that even after they gave him sodium pentothal, they're still asking him the same question the whole time. What is your launch code? And he goes, and the unicorn plays with the dragon. And he starts singing and they don't realize he's answering them right there. Like Alfred Pennyworth is giving them the answer. But he's so far ahead of them tactically that they just aren't intelligent enough to figure it out. I'm getting loud because this will this is gonna be loud in the mic. I need to I need to calm it down. Alfred was one of my favorite characters because Alfred was still a badass. Even in uh what was it? Batman uh what was it? Batman Superman? When they did the one where, you know, Superman gets shot with a they uh Lex Luthor starts taking kryptonite and whatnot, and Batman and Superman gotta save the save the planet. There was actually one point where, you know, Batman, you know, Superman rips off the door and Alfred comes down there with a fucking shotgun. <laughs> like he's, he's going to, someone is attempting to break into the Bat cave and I'm going to fuck them up. Bat, I mean, Alfred was a, was the father fit. He loved Bruce like a son. 
And he, he allowed Bruce Wayne to do this stuff because he, he allowed him to be his own man. But he was, there were a lot of times, you know, Bruce would be sitting there doing things and Alfred would come down there, you know, and he would be kind of the grounding force. He wanted to be there. And also, I mean, do you really think that Bruce is, I mean, this is another thing also. You think that Batman would treat his father figure horribly, like he's making him live in the shack out back. Because this is what you would do with your parents. You probably have no respect for your parents either. And this is something that you see with a lot of SJWs. They have no respect for people who are older than them. They view them as, as old and, and outdated and whatnot. And you you would probably be the one who puts... And, and I'm, I'm making an assumption here. I'll admit that. I could be wrong. But you're probably the person who, if you had millions of dollars, you'd stick your mom and dad in like the, the broom closet or something. That's where they'd have to live. Me, myself, if I had millions of dollars, I would just build a small house outside. And if my parents wanted to live in it, they could live in it. If not, they could just live inside the house. I wouldn't care. Bur Wayne Manor has so many freaking rooms. Like I said, again, Batman has stupid levels of money. All right, just stupid levels of money. Like we, we're we're talking, he's almost a Scrooge McDuck in terms of stupid levels of money, and he can afford. He does everything you're asking him to do. He still takes care of Alfred. I love how he makes Alfred look gay as fuck right now, because they. I guess he's trying to pull the crazy Asian high school Batman nonsense. Like, oh, I'm so sweet and innocent and queer as F. Feel bad for me. I bet Robin isn't even being paid. He's an intern. He's lucky to have this kind of hands-on experience. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. Depending on what Robin you're talking about, Dick Grace, if we're talking about Dick Grayson, Dick Grayson goes on to be an actual cop. Like, he goes on, Batman, Bruce pays for all of his college, he pays for all of his equipment still, even though he's not operating inside the same city as Batman. And Dick Grayson goes on to be a street cop during the day and Nightwing at night. I don't know when he gets time to screw Barbara Gordon or Starfire, depending on which iteration you're going on. I really don't mind him. I really think he should be screwing Starfire more. Dick is the guy that seems like he should. He deserves that kind of pussy. But hey, um, he really doesn't need to get paid. He he ends up. Back, Bruce gives him so much stuff. Now you go by you know like Jason Todd and some of the other Robins were made you know to be you know kind of tragic. So I guess we're talking about Dick Grayson. And I mean it's like, look, Batman done paid for his his college. Okay. He paid for everything. Dick Grayson went where he wanted to go. He wanted to become law enforcement. He wanted to put his skills to use. And really Dick Grayson pulls off some crazy stunts. There's, there's several times where in the comics, Dick Grayson pulls off some weird acrobatic moves and they're like, dang dude, I could never do that on a good day. And Dick's like, well, you know, that's the benefit of growing up in the surface circus. You know, that that's what he was. He was a circus act. He was a trapeze artist. He was an acrobat. And Bruce Wayne took, and he was an acrobat who went through the same thing Bruce went through. And Bruce was like, this kid went through what I did. He's not going to have the money backing him up. He's not going to have Alfred. I'm going to have to give this to him. He felt bad for him. Okay? It was compassionate what he did. And, you know, Dick goes on. But, I mean, oh, you know, we're, we're anti-cop right now. So Dick Grayson becoming a police officer was probably a bad thing. Well, let's just keep going. Go to sleep, Robin. Yes, Mr. Batman, sir. No. <sighs> Dear Lord. Like, Batman's supposed to be this horrible person. It, it, it's going to accumulate here into something. When you when you see the final panel, you're going to be like, this is where this idiot's coming from. And that you also need to realize, this is the type of idiot that they put in comics. With this poor-ass art style. Like Batman has done something wrong. All we did was we placed a a little nightcap on him and told him to go to, told him to go to sleep wrong. Like Batman would do this. 
The only time Batman is usually intervened is when he feels the when he feels that his partner whenever he's interfered with Robin or any of his partners, anyone that's worked with Batman, the only time he interferes is when he thinks that there's going to be a problem. If it's a situation that he's going into, he doesn't feel comfortable putting them in. Batman, Bruce Wayne would rather go into a situation with every one of his rogues gallery with Robin sitting outside waiting for the police if he knew that Robin wasn't going to make it. And he's been on the side of where his, some of his Robins didn't make it. Jason Todd, for instance, amazing character. They fuck him up royally sometimes in the comics, but Jason Todd is awesome. Batman does not sit there and do stupid crap like this without a reason. You have to remember that. This person, like I said, knows nothing about Batman. But we're getting to the accumulation of this. You know, like Batman has done this wrong. Batman would never have done this. We're strawmanning really bad here. And then here it is. Am I the bad guy? Yes. There are no ethical billionaires. Are you serious? We're, here comes the communism right there. We've had nothing but politics. It's not been entertaining. This has just been one long ass meme. Okay? It is one long ass meme to make a serious polit- a, a, something that's supposed to be funny and entertaining and make you think with comedy has been one long ass essay about how rich people are bad, even though we do not understand economics whatsoever. And I can see Darkseid stepping down, you know. Here's a comic. Four panels about this nonsense. Darkseid is coming to Earth. Batman hands him $1,500 like you're asking Batman to do. He goes, here, I'm solving your problems with a living wage. Darkseid takes the money and still starts vaporizing people. And Batman goes, are you not? Why are you doing this? I thought you were supposed to be happy and dark side just vaporizing people with his eye be- omega beams going, yes, this makes me happy. We don't understand Batman. We don't understand the universe he lives in. We want to, we want to say that Batman is a cop. This honestly, it came out years ago. People were trying to say Batman was a bad character because, oh, he's basically a cop. He's basically a cop, cop, Batman bad because Batman cop, man, me, bad man. Batman, not Batman, Batman. That's what this is. It, it's no, there's no, there's no ethical billionaires. There are plenty of ethical billionaires. There are plenty of people who go out there and put their money into stuff. What you want, this is what he wants. He wants a living wage. For those of you who don't know what a living wage is, this is just the government paying you to exist. Like you do nothing, but they're supposed to just give you money. This is the concept of the left. This is their ultimate utopia. The government takes care of me, like mommy and daddy used to take care of me when they were helicopter parents and bulldozer parents, where every problem that I have in life is taken care of. And, oh, by the way, I don't ever have to deal with anything that would bo- that would hurt me. And let me tell you something. One of the best character-building moments of any boy is getting punched in the mouth. Because one, it gives you a judge of how tough you are. And two, it teaches you to turn your head to the side when someone's shoulder twitches. Here we have have the same group of people coming out here again. Destroying comics. And like I said, this is the person who's going to be put in charge of comics. These are the people that they're hiring. They're anti-capitalist, communist anti-authoritarian morons who have no real-world experience whatsoever. Like I said, and, and they have no knowledge of what they're getting into. They will get into DC Comics. You see this all the time. They get into DC Comics they don't understand. It. They get into Marvel Comics don't understand. It. One of the most craziest examples was Jennifer. She was Jennifer who played Jennifer Banner who plays who is a uh, She-Hulk. Where she's sitting back there. I think I've talked about this before, but we're going to hit it again. Where she's bitching and moaning to herself about how Bruce Banner was chased all the time. And she wanted to punch Bruce in the face because he told her it was so cool. And he was jealous of how she was just accepted by society. And in all honesty, she was mad because she didn't have Bruce's oppression. 
Okay? Oh, Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner. He got oppressed. They sent tanks after him. They developed weapons just for him. Nobody develops weapons for me. I don't get that kind of attention. It is so damn stupid. And the person who's writing that book, who wrote that book, who wrote that entire scene, knows nothing about life. Knows nothing about hardship. They think one group of people have a problem and the other group of people don't. They think that if you're this sex, you don't have problems, but sex B has all the problems in the world. And they think that's a good thing. It's just, it, it literally is an Olympic sport to these people to see who has the most oppression. There's actually a video on the internet. I can't remember who did it. But they're sitting in a classroom and they're talking about oppression. There's this one chick who's really proud of herself. She's this white chick. And they start talking about all the oppression that they're going through. And she says, well, I'm a woman. I'm this. She gets so many points. But then the guy goes, but you're straight. So we have to subtract two points from your oppression score. <laughs> and she's pissed off. Because she's like, how dare you sacrifice my oppression points. And then there's this one dude in the back who's just really mental. Who goes, I can't remember if he does or not. But it's, it's almost to the point of he goes full circle. He starts naming off genders. And he goes full circle around the genders till he comes back as straight. And that gives him all kinds of oppression points. And that's what it is. It's just one big circular, it's one big circle jerk. That's what all this nonsense is. And these people get hired because like Myers and many others have said, they come into a hobby they know nothing about, per to this, and they do nothing but change it. Well, I think this should be fixed. And I think that should be fixed. It's sort of, if you ever see the movie RoboCop 2, this is the best analogy I can come up with. It's the scene in RoboCop 2 where after, you know, they jackhammer RoboCop into pieces and they decide to rebuild him. And they start rebuilding RoboCop and they're like, we can rebuild RoboCop. We're trying to build a RoboCop 2 that's bigger and better than RoboCop 1. So, let's try to improve RoboCop 1's programming. And RoboCop ends up being such a joke afterward, his priorities are so jacked, that he lets criminals go. But then he's like, I do not need to use an excessive amount of lethal force. But then shoots the living hell out of a wall behind a dude just traces the guy's head with bullets. No lie, he actually does this. Because the dude is smoking a cigarette. He goes out there and turns off water on a hot day for kids who have the water main open, telling them, let me explain to you about the virtues of saving water for our planet. It's like, dude, it's a hot day. Those kids going to die of sunstroke. You going to go out there? I hope RoboCop has a heat has like a air conditioner in his ass because that's just going to kill it. Finally, it comes down to the point where RoboCop gets a jolt and that ends up fixing him completely. It erases the programming. What, what do the Karens do who, who reinvented RoboCop's programming? They go out there and they get a convicted criminal thing. See, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a violent criminal's brain and put him in a high-tech killer robot with an A-10 minigun mounted to the top of his shoulder, and we're going to reform all the criminals and make cops out of them. Isn't that neat? And it ends about like you'd expect it to, okay? RoboCop's got to take this guy, Kane, who's the main villain, who basically, become, they turn him into an armored cyborg, and he just starts, he breaks the remote, breaks out and just starts destroying everything. It, it is a perfect analogy of the comic book industry right now. It's RoboCop 2. All right? They get done. They realize they can't keep the fans under control, so they get new fans. They make a new comic book industry, and it just starts destroying itself. It destroys everything. And finally, the final nail in the coffin, real RoboCop shows up there with a Cobra assault cannon and starts taking care of business. Anyway, folks, I'm the Last Raider. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a long one. I hope y'all watched this all the way through, and I hope I got some points and was entertaining for you folks. Anyway, if you like the video, please be sure to like, comment if you want to talk about it. I'd like to hear what you say about the video. And also remember to 
subscribe if you're new and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, I try to put these videos out as much as I can, and I like hearing from you guys in the comments. Also, as always, I am the last Raider. Stay safe, stay frosty, folks. There's some crazy people out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video.